Okay, so as I was saying, um, we're still continuing with practical programming and making content. And we're looking at chapter six in Valerie Geller's textbook, page 45 to, to 64, which is performance and informatics. So quite an important section, obviously, because you have to understand how to be on air. Um, and you have to understand from a performance point of view, um, what to do and what not to do. And I've spoken about the fact that it doesn't really matter how great your content is. If your performance is poor, then the content gets seen as poor overall. Radio communication uses the utilizes theater of the mind and the people on radio must talk in pictures. The same principle applies to all material written and produced for on air use as well. And then there's a nice quote on page 45 that says to escape criticism, do nothing, say nothing, be nothing. It's quite hard work actually to be on air, to prep all these things. You would have seen all the different elements and things that you need to look out, obviously keeping in mind that your content always has to be relevant, relatable, entertaining. It has to be emotive. It has to be personable. There are so many elements that you need to involve, keeping in mind there are only two types of links, the promise and a performance. So, there are some broadcasters on air that you can hear they seem quite pained and uncomfortable um, when things go wrong. But then there are others that are extremely talented and they make it seem very easy. Okay, So an accomplished professional and a talented um, seasoned radio presenter will give you that feeling that they're in control no matter what happens. And that's where you need to be at. You need to be in control on air no matter what. So you want to be that spontaneous person. The problem is it actually really takes years of hard work and practice to get to this point where you can call yourself a seasoned professional to the point that when anything happens on air, anything goes wrong, you are okay, you're comfortable. It's like that clip that I played with regards to features last week where they the call dropped at the beginning of their feature so they just kind of bantered between them but they still kept it personable so they still talk, spoke about themselves as well in terms of clothing etc so this is a skill that can be learned it takes a lot of work but it's something you can learn how to sound in control no matter what the people that you admire on a have mastered some of these basic techniques and they carry it through with them in the most difficult situations. It's these experiences that make them so adept now. Unfortunately, you need to go through these things for you to become used to it because then it becomes experiences and then you know what to do if it ever happens again. What we're going to do is we're going to look at having you avoid certain traps by practicing some elementary performance points. And there are things that you can do to self-correct should the show begin to take a turn for the worse, so should something go wrong. So the first one there is pick a topic which you really care about, so something that you have a passion for. A great on-air personality or presenter can make selecting a sofa interesting. Boring people, on the other hand, can ruin a conversation about the most interesting topics. If you're interested, you will make it interesting. If you're not interested, you will make it sound boring. Bored people make things sound boring. Interested people make something sound interesting, Okay, especially if you're super uh, passionate about it. So the second one is use a strong show opening or a monologue. Be sure to focus the topic, engage the audience by forming a question. So. Um, your assignment also says that you should engage the audience, so it should be engaging. How do you do that? You ask a question. State your opinion or your position on a talk talkable topic. So tell us what you think about it and explain your view through example or experience or storytelling. What I want you to focus on as well is not to read on air. That's a very difficult one and that's one that you might struggle with. So bullet points help here. Instead of simply reading whatever you have prepped from beginning to end, focus on bullet points and prep to the extent that you understand exactly what we are talking about, what is happening on air. Um, because that way you won't sound like you are reading the whole time. And then 
never be boring. Get rid of a boring guest immediately. Remember, if you are bored, it's boring. Your listeners are going to find it boring. So if your guest starts out great or um, was selected as an expert, but in fact turned out to be quite stiff or too nervous to think clearly, or is in any other way um, non-communicative or inept as a storyteller, you need to get rid of that guest. How often have you listened to something and you've checked your watch, okay? Uh, when a guest is talking or you are, I don't know, thinking about something else completely, you're daydreaming. When this happens, you need to do something to raise the level of the energy in the room because you are losing listeners at this point. And if you can't raise that energy in the room, then you need to dismiss the guest. It's as simple as that. If it's a problem for you specifically to let go of a guest, then you need to simply find someone else um, to come in and do it for you, okay? Someone like a newsreader that can come in and say, hey, um, I have to start prepping for something or I need to chat to you about something or we have to do a different element now or whatever it might be. Remember, you are probably way more interesting than your guests would be because people come to listen to you, to your personality. So be flexible and protect your air product. If the guest is great, then you keep them for longer. If not, then you get rid of them. So why is it so difficult to get rid of a boring guest? Why is that so difficult? It's difficult because we don't want to be rude. We have been taught by society not to be rude. But what you don't realize is by keeping that person on, not to be rude to that guest, you're being very rude to your audience. And listeners are not going to stay just because they think that they are being rude. People don't think like that when we listen to radio. We just switch. It's as easy as that. So that's what you need to keep in mind there. You might be afraid of offending this person in studio, but in actual fact, you're offending your listeners and you're losing them in the process. So rather get rid of someone. Ultimately, it's better to be abrupt to one caller or one guest uh, than to be impolite to your whole audience because boring them be uh, you're boring them simply because you feel uncomfortable with cutting a situation. So rather get out of it. That's basically what it comes down to. Never promise a guest an hour of airtime, for instance. You never promise them how much airtime you can give them because you need that out for in case they are not that great, okay, to be able to uh, easily get them off the air. Don't take calls just because they are there. This is one that a lot of presenters struggle with that have been on air for a while even. What people do is they, they tend to forget that guests should be simply tools for the host to make use of to create a better show. You only put a caller on air as a character to make your overall show sound better. If they're not improving the content of your show, don't put them on air. That's where what it comes up to. Um, some guests are, can be great for three hours because they're natural generators and they're entertaining and they're relevant and relatable and they have great payoffs, for instance. But other callers can go on for five minutes, but it's only worthy of five seconds worth of content. This is where you as a good host and a presenter comes in to tell the difference and pace the show accordingly. So only use the callers that will enhance your show. Also, something that you need to keep in mind. Have you ever noticed that when people speak, sorry, just give me a second, my cat wants to come in. When people speak, they tend to repeat what they've just said, especially if they think they're making an important statement. So callers will make their point, they and begin to make the second uh, the statement a second time if left unchecked. The trick is for you to pick this up and to get them off the air when they finish the, their best material before they say, oh, just one more thing, okay? Because then they're going to loop around again. Listen to the way people speak around you. You'll pick this up very easily. I do it also a lot in class where I repeat something that I've just said. So it's the way that people speak. Then number, number five there, what if the interview or the topic goes wrong? What do you do then? Sometimes you might ask a wrong question or you don't frame your topic or in, um, engaging question well. 
if you're not getting the answer that you want, perhaps it's time to change the story or example a little um, or to recompose the question to engage the audience differently. Don't be afraid to reset your topic going into or coming back from a break. So don't be afraid to reset. I will talk to you about reset now, but don't repeat your topic exactly. Okay, Add something new. That's the big difference there. You can change your mind. It's important to realize that you don't have to stick to your standpoint if someone changed it for you with their arguments. So your opinion is allowed to change. Views may change as an issue evolves over days or over weeks. Don't be afraid to change your opinion as more facts might become available or if a caller or a guest persuades you with a strong argument to change your mind. Also, don't, um, don't stick to your guns if you're wrong. Remember, always tell the truth and don't be afraid to admit that you don't know something. You're not expected to have all the facts about every single issue all the time. So you can change your mind. Then the last one there is take a risk on air. Sometimes you head into a danger zone with a comment or a view or a question or some decision that you make about what goes out on air. Understand that not everything you say will be popular, even if it feels true. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, you have an opinion. You are allowed to have one. A lot of what you say can get away with, depends on your relationship with management. So what you, how far you can push things on air would sometimes depend on your uh, relationship with management. Because obviously, if you've been at the station for a couple of years, they might trust you a bit more than if you've simply been at the station for a couple of months. Even more depends on your level of success. So how well are you doing? If you are a breakfast host, I'm going to give you more leeway than if you are a Saturday um, mid-afternoon host. So proven personalities can get away with a lot more than unproven talent or new arrivals. You haven't showed us that it, that you deserve this chance yet. Okay, You need to earn it. So you need to work your way up to earn this. Sometimes there are some gray areas, so controversial or gray areas, and sometimes it's better to ask permission from your manager before you simply do something on air. Power, a powerful show is not only when a host in, uh, um, lives in fear of getting the ax. So if you are worried the whole time that you're going to get fired, then you're going to be in the safe zone 24-7. That's not powerful radio content, unfortunately. So sometimes you need to realize where the gray areas are as well. If a talent calls you and lets you know that they are about to move into a potentially dangerous situation as the manager, you need to make a decision. Sometimes you might, as management, need to consult with the lawyer or another manager before you give an answer. So there's that question. Is it big? Is it better to beg for forgiveness or to ask permission? So some people would say it's better to ask for forgiveness than for permission, but that will depend. It's not always the case. So trust your instincts or your gut on air. It depends on how you feel, but try not to hold yourself back from potentially powerful moments. Don't be so afraid of failure or getting into trouble that you lose your spontaneity and your sense of discovery, because that's what makes you, you. And that's what makes people tune into who you are. Live radio is a live experience and it should stay that. So I don't know if you've ever heard for, um, of Howard Stern, but he's a great example of someone who pushes the boundaries. So he's chosen to move his entire show into al alternative distribution uh, systems because he used to get into a lot of trouble and he can't be restricted. So broadcast executive Mel Karmazin always backed the multimedia personality, Howard Stern that is. When they worked together at CBS Radio, no matter what Stern said, if he crossed the line and got the network into trouble, Mel paid the fines, okay? She paid the penalty fines. Why? Because as a manager, she believed in Howard and liked the profit generated from the show. So the show made money, so if he got penalized every now and then for what he said, they paid it because he still made money on the show and he had a great show because the manager also understood that talent can't be restricted. That's the big thing. If you want great moments, you must assume some risk. 
Okay, you have to weigh up the rewards at the end of the day. Okay, use your off switch. This is a difficult one. This is one that a lot of people struggle with that you might struggle with at the beginning. Master the use of the most difficult piece of equipment in the control room, and that is the off switch on your microphone, the off button. Practice moderation. Learn to recognize when a bit is over and stop talking at that point. Way too often we listen to a piece of radio and me personally, I go, oh, that was a great piece of audio. And then they continue talking. Then I think to myself, they should have just ended it there because now it's becoming watered down. So you need to know when to stop talking. Then number nine, the day you wished you stayed in bed, you are going to get a day like that. Not every show will be your best show. Uh, even your favorite on a personality has the occasional bad day. Everyone has a bad day. Sometimes uh, you just can't pull off the content correctly, no matter what. Your rhythm might be off or you may not be feeling well. You might be a bit sick. When you had a show that didn't work, it's important that you do a quick analysis for yourself. So look, at the, uh, look for an e easily identifiable reason why your show might not have been the best show that you normally would have. Perhaps you didn't sleep enough, or perhaps you're hungry, or perhaps you didn't prep well enough. A fight with your, I don't know, former spouse just before you went on air. If it's fixable, fix it. Do it differently next time. That's all you can do at this point. Perhaps you simply, simply just had a bad show. You just did a poor job. There are two things that you can do. You can choose to pick it apart over and over and beat yourself up with air check, making yourself feel terrible, thereby ensuring that you will do a worse job tomorrow, or you can let it go. Let it go. Regular listeners who like you will forgive you for one bad show. Remember what I said with regards to the maturity phase and the growth phase. If you make a mistake here, people will uh, accept it. They will they will still come back tomorrow to listen to you. And tomorrow you might also, well, you probably will have listeners who've never been listening to you before. So they don't even know that yesterday happened. So forgive yourself and move on. Then the last one, treat the staff you work with respectfully, everyone. Whether you know it or not, they have a lot of impact on your performance. The station staff can help you or they can sabotage you in a million ways. A miserable team will cost you more than you think at the end of the day. So focus on that. Formatics, very important. Some presenters don't like formatics. I know that they find it restrictive, but the audience likes the structure of station formatics. Listeners want to know to whom they are listening. I like knowing who it is that's on air currently if I don't recognize your voice. And I like knowing uh, what songs played. On-air personalities must learn to be creative within the confines of formatics. That's very important for me, is that you focus on the way that you do the Mexican on the bicycle, because you have to do it, but I want you to do it in a creative way and not in the everyday generic way. So how can you use formatics to get a listener to listen for a little bit longer, those extra five minutes? Because what is the number one rule in radio? Get your listeners to listen for as long as possible. Okay, so how do you do that? You should be trying to get all your listeners to listen for an extra five minutes every single day. If all of them gave you five minutes more every day this week, your share would, in, would move in a very positive um, direction. So we're going to look at a couple of examples how you can get your content to be sticky, okay, to make your station sticky. What does that mean? Do you remember what sticky refers to? So stickiness is literally that. How can I get you to stick? How can I get you to listen for longer? So we, we do the same thing on a website. We refer to stickiness. And that is simply how I try to get you to listen for longer. Okay, so I get you to stick to the station. So how do we do that? We start by inviting. That's the first one. Invite your listener to the station. And invite them like you mean it, like you really want them there. Okay, invite five minutes ahead. That's it. Only five minutes ahead. So like a magician, don't do the full reveal. So keep something up your sleeve by inviting with a hook that tells your audience what is in it for them. It's like I said, always with a promise. You incorporate your hook 
of your performance link, but you also don't give everything away. You make sure that you keep them intrigued and curious so that they have to listen to your next link to hear the rest of the information. Then invite them frequently. So invite them five minutes, um, invite five minutes more listening uh, anytime there's something happening. So let's say you might be playing ads, then you invite them to stay for the next link. Or if it's news, you invite them to stay for the link after news, etc. So at the top of the hour, invite across the news and make people feel included in what's, what follows the news or promote what, uh, what we are about to in the news. As you change topics or switch to something new, invite the audience to say and tell them why this is going to be good. So you get them to buy in to your content. As you go into a song, someone might not like the specific song. So you invite them by telling them what is coming up after the song, what will be next. So you do your promises, okay? Before the next guest, invite your audience to listen in or to join in once again. Then you make an appointment, appointment listening. Remember that. What if you decide you want to invite your audience more than five minutes ahead? That will be where you're doing appointment listening. And appointment listening is important to increase your station's ratings through time spent listening, TSL. And you give your listeners the exact time that they're going to hear something. If they're interested, but you're vague on the time, they won't bother probably, okay? So you give them the exact time. Tell people exactly when they are going to hear something and they might make the effort, okay? Research supports this technique and it's easy to do. Then you are invited. Live, ra live radio is still the one place where you join the action in progress. So it's obviously live. So it's important that listeners feel that they can join in any time and are always invited into your program so that you reset and they feel like they can join at any point. Overcoming resistance. If the talent doesn't understand the absolute importance of formatics, they won't be a priority and you won't be able to pull it off as you should. It's to everyone's benefit if presenters understand how your listeners listen. You, you need to understand what a listener is listening for, so you need to listen to radio as a listener. And then give credit where credit is due. Be responsible for eliminating what ratings term phantom cue. So what is phantom cue? Phantom cue is the people who listen to your radio, but can't remember exactly when they were tuned in. So when they did the ratings, when they did the RAMS uh, research, they didn't put down your station because they couldn't remember it. So phantom cue is very important for us here to try and avoid. So I'm going to say again, phantom cue. Cue equals cumulative audience, which is your overall listenership. Phantom cue equals the listenership that you've lost because they couldn't remember what station you were. They remember listening to you. They can't remember what radio station you are. So you lost that potential percentage of listeners on your overall cue for the radio station. Repetition is a way to learn and memorize. People take things in through repetition. So repeat and repeat and repeat until your listeners know your details and the station or the show's details. That's what you want at the end of the day. And that happens over time. That's why we play ads so often as well, because it's the same thing. We need to drill this into your brain. So each format and station has a slightly different structure. They all have one thing in common though, your listeners should never feel the pressure um, that you feel to execute formatics correctly. They shouldn't know that there's anything that is straining you. It should seem seamless and like you're in control no matter what, okay. Every 15 minutes, you are judged by what uh, diary keepers write down, like I've said. This means that every 15 minutes, you should be saying your name, the name of the show, the name of the station, your call letters and dial position. That's just like your FM frequency. Okay, so every 15 minutes. Repetition is the way that we learn and we memorize. 
if you look at the bottom of page 57, you'll see a short talk formatics uh, table there, which says open the hour with your name, the, the time and the call letters. Call letters again is the frequency of the radio station. Do some short opening comments. If you have any that uh, any that day, which may or may not uh, be your main topic. So launch into your monologue. So engage the audience with your opinion, your position and storytelling. Give out phone numbers. Take a break using proper formatics. Use the term up next instead of take a break. Please never on air say take a break. That is a television term. When you say let's take a break or we're quickly going to take a break on air, you are telling your listeners that they can also take a break. Okay, Whether they understand it this way subconsciously or not, that is what you are saying, which means they might go away now instead of staying to listen further. Never say let's take a break on air, on radio. You will say up next. Open the floodgates, so the phones, after your first break. And then reset the topic. So here we go. Reset the topic by asking the question going in and out of each break using proper formatics. So what you do with the reset is you use your same topic, but you reset it by changing a little bit of elements and you still give us a breakdown of what it is that we are currently talking about. For In case I missed the first link, then now I have an idea of what is going on. I don't feel excluded. So resetting and teasing. Since new people keep tuning in, the host needs to frequently recap guests' names, what group they present, and showing how the topic is interesting to a listener. Keep teasing upcoming show segments or features, waiting five minutes in a drive time interview to recap what's going on, or only teasing once or twice an hour is simply not enough. Okay, that is what the resetting is. Formatics don't have to be dry and boring. That's what I'm trying to get you to remember here. Um, if you do them well, they can become a creative and exciting part of your show. It depends on you. So be sensitive to repetition. A good talent will vary the way everything is done. And the listener wants consistency, but not predictability. So be consistent, not predictable. Even if positioning phrases or branding should require that things be said in the same words all the time, the talent can still vary the inflection of the words so that you can still train, uh, change certain things and you can still change your tone. Repetition becomes boring very quickly and is also an indicator of the deadly automatic pilot mentality that can come down to a, to a, a, a station or a presenter quite fast. And that's what I was talking about earlier with it becoming a crutch. So it can become a crutch very easily to use your formatics. And that is a very bad thing. So you need to focus on how you can use these things in an interesting manner. How can you work them in without going on automatic pilot and simply saying them because you have to say them. So there are more specific ways to use formatics to engage your audience from Tommy Cromer. And the first is pull the listener into the radio with you. So um, never split what you're saying with me. Don't put us in different rooms. If you're saying it is 25 degrees out there, then you're telling your, your listener that you're in a separate place to where they are. You are creating a distance between you, not making it seem like you're talking directly at that person. So don't say things like, or it's it's so hot in Centurion. And if I'm sitting in Santon, I'm going to immediately have this distance with you. Okay, so pull the listener into the station with you. Then sell the benefit. Always sell the benefit of a radio station. Um, what is the benefit in this thing to me? What is in this that I can make use of? That is very important. Use real language. Talk on the air the way that you talk in real life. Please don't say things like, for further information and details, call 456-1111. Rather see if this doesn't sound more effective to you. You want to know more? Give me a call. Or if I ask you the time in real life, you're going to tell me it's 
you're going to tell me it's 10 past 11. So why on earth would you go on air and say, it's just got, gone nine minutes past 11 here on whatever the radio station is? Talk the way that you talk in real life, okay? Um, always remember that one. Connect with your listener. Tell me, don't read to me. Again, you're going to lose people if you read to them. The rule of one, do one main thing per break. Mexican on the bicycle, one thought per link. That's what you um, focus on. Then hit the target. Many stations find it helpful to draw up a specific profile of your listener, uh, complete with a picture if it's, if it's possible, okay? So that you understand who it is that you are talking to at all times. Then promote ahead. Promote anything of benefit coming up on your show. Be truthful. Never promise anything that's coming up after the break. Um, also, you're not going to say after the break. You're going to say coming up next. But yes, saying coming up after the break is like saying, I'm going away now. Bye. So stay away from that. Don't tell the listener what to think. Oh, I hate that. I hate when someone tells me this is what I think. Because I'm like, you don't know what I'm thinking. So don't tell me what I'm thinking. And that counts here as well. It's irritating if you say something like, here's one you'll really like. Because how do you know I'm really going to like it? Maybe I don't. Rather stick to how you feel about it. And let me decide for myself how I feel about it. So rather say something like, I love this next one coming up. I hope you like it too. Let me know what your thoughts are. Whatever it is, something like that. Then sell the dream first before you give the information. It's the same way that we do everything else. We do the why, then we focus on the how. Same with advertising. We do the why, then we focus on the how. We sell the dream before we give the information. When we do interviews, we tell you all the funny, nice things first. Then we'll give you the information on, we, on the actual book and where you can find it. Right? If you don't make me, make me want what's being offered, then there's no reason for me to care at all about the technical information. You need to get me to buy into it first before you give me that sort of information that's technical. Okay. Then have a roadmap. So have your storytelling elements there. Know your beginning, know your middle, know your end. Understand how you are moving from the one to the next and how are you getting out of your link? Super important. Okay. What is your, uh, how are you getting to your blackout after your payoff? Also, what is your payoff? Is your payoff strong enough? So focus on those. Know how to edit phone calls. There are very easy programs out there, like at uh, campus, you can learn on um, Logic Pro, very easy. You can also use Adobe, very easy. There are really easy um, editing and production programs out there that you can make use of. Because you want to cut out all the unnecessary stuff like, hey, hey, how are you? I'm doing great things and you know I'm doing well. Have you seen the weather today? It's so strange. It's so sunny, but it was, but it's also so cold, whatever. No one cares about all of that. Okay. So you will want to edit all of that out, uh, which is why it's important that you understand how to edit. The informatics for the caller. Dennis Clark uses a specific format for calls that go to air on Ryan Seacrest's show. Each caller is identified by name and place, and after they make their point, uh, they get a brief and sincere acknowledgement of their call. That's it. So the standard formatic, this standard of formatics lets, lets the listeners feel safe to call in. So they shouldn't be scared of uh, going on air because they might feel embarrassed or humiliated. Then reset the stage, like I've just said as well. Every couple of minutes, briefly reset the stage for anyone who may be joining the show who doesn't know what you're talking about. It's like when you're, if two of you are talking and a third friend comes to join you, you will reset the stage for your third friend. You'll, you will say, oh, we're talking about this, okay, so that the person knows what it is that you are referring to. Then break the habit of taking a break. Like I've said, don't say take a break. That is TV. We don't take a break. We say this is what's going to happen up next. Don't panic if you need a moment on air also. Um, <laughs> have you ever listened to someone on air and they were just 
chattering away aimlessly because they were super anxious. Something obviously happened in studio and now they're struggling to fix it, but they also don't want dead air. So they are just blabbering about all the time with anything that comes to mind. Which one will be more effective? Them just keeping quiet for a bit and trying to fix it or them keeping blabbering the whole time? The latter, because you're going to wonder about what's going on, but the person on air is not going to annoy you to the point where you switch off the radio. If you need to take a moment, then take a moment, okay? Keep the minute, like it's, the old school radio presenters were taught that no matter what, they need to keep the meter rolling. They need to keep saying whatever happens, keep talking. It was that kind of a thinking, okay? But that fear of dead air can provoke meaningless um, manic episodes that will lose your audience. So don't be afraid of a moment of silence. The listeners will understand. In fact, most of us will simply go, where's it gone? And then when it comes back, you're like, oh, there they are. And you carry on without thinking about it. Um, it's us that overthink it, us radio people. So don't panic. That's the big thing here. Don't panic. Take a pause if you need a few seconds to collect your thoughts. Also, taking a moment of silence can be a great tool because silence is very powerful. Have you noticed that if there's silence on the radio, we immediately zoom in. We're like, ooh, what happened? So um, it's also a way of getting your listeners' attention. Content plus formatics equals ratings. In addition to your content and style, there are some talk radio basic formatics that can make a difference and get your ratings. So before each break, aka before each time that you stop talking, remember to tease what is coming up. So remember to do a promise link or reset your talkable topic or engaging question. Involve your listeners. Use a cliffhanger to keep to keep them coming back for more. So cliffhanger is something that we'll use to create curiosity and intrigue out of a listener. So we give them a little bit of information, but not enough to, for them to have a payoff. They have to tune in if they want to know what's going to happen. After each break, um, briefly reset your topic. This could include, well, this should include your name, your dial position, AKA your frequency, um, the topic that you're talking about, the phone number, and the time check if it's relevant. So something like in case you've just joined us, it's 620, I am Sharita Van Berg, and you are listening to WXYZ AM. Our guest is supermodel Christy Christensen talking about her new book, Sleep Your Way to the Top. What do you think about using sex to get your job? Call us at 666-8255. Okay. At first, working with formats, formatics can be a struggle. A check yourself regularly. So when you record something, listen to it. I air check myself very regularly still. Okay. Um, I listened back to these recordings to hear what I sounded like, how I spoke. Yes, what I could have changed, etc. Keep practicing and you will notice improvement. Practice makes perfect. Okay. When someone comes up to you in a hall and says, oh, you make it all sound so easy. You will know that you've mastered the formatics. So that is our formatics. Oops. So just quickly to recap the key lecture points. So radio communication utilizes the theater of the mind and the people on the radio must talk in pictures. The same principle applies to all material written or produced for on-air use as well. When you listen to the radio, you will notice there is talent that sounds spontaneous, natural, and easy. There will also be talent who seems pained and uncomfortable when things go astray, and they make it feel uneasy. They make you feel uneasy to hear them react to a situation that way. Seasoned professional talent always gives the impression that they're in control no matter what. This is a skill that you can learn by practicing the elementary performance points and by learning how to self-correct, thinking about everything that we just went through. And yes, there are some talent who views formatics as restrictive, restrictive, and they normally don't understand why formatics is so important either. 
but the audience likes structure. That's what it comes up to. Um, listeners want to know to whom they're listening. And then lastly, on a personalities must learn to be creative within the confines of formatics. I'm going to say goodbye for you, to you for today. Have a lovely rest of your Tuesday.